Is your hair good? Yes, good. What about mine? Is my, is yes. my hair good? Looking good. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Eyebrows? Yes. Eyebrows behind the glasses, good. Okay. Money! In today's video, we're going to cover everything you needed to know about moving to a tropical island destination and making a living. Let's do it. <laughs> into the reality of creating a financially sustainable life on a small tropical island. There are three primary ways that moving to a remote location can work for you and you can make a, a living. The first one is the legal method and we kind of highly recommend this one. You find a job, you apply for your work permits, you apply for your visas and you come down here once all of those have come through, once all the paperwork's been approved and do that. Now. That's not to say that it's the only way to do it, but it's probably the best way to do it and the safest way to do it because then you're not uh, encountering any of the issues you might have with having to do visa runs or leave the country or running out of time uh, on your visa stamp. It's really important to make sure that you do have all of the relevant paperwork because it can cause issues later down the line if people realise you're working and all of your stamps aren't in the right place. It is possible to come to the location find the dream job that you're looking for and apply for the work permit whilst you're here and any other issues you've got. As I've said, you may need to do a visa run, so you've got to factor in the cost of doing that, but you've also got to factor in the cost that the application process in most destinations like this is, what's the word I'm looking for? Long. It's not difficult and there's not a lot of paperwork that's typically needed, it's just that it all disappears into a black hole and pops out months and months and months later without any rhyme or reason as to why it should take that long. But it does. So be prepared for the fact that even if a government does say that the work permit application process should only take three weeks, quadruple that at least. Like the island pace. Island pace, island time. Yeah, just everything is a lot slower than we say it is. So the second method we don't actually recommend that much is to work on the um, black economy. So there are businesses which might employ you on a sort of a cash in hand kind of basis, but then you're sort of on your own if you get found out and you will likely be deported. So it's not safe. So for many people, it is a way of earning a small amount of topping up uh, their cash before they move on to another location. Keep in mind that as depending on where you are, you could be breaking quite a few laws. So the third option, as well as physically working here in the location, something that a lot of people are now starting to look at is the digital nomad lifestyle, or a combination of two, where you have a, 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 an in-place job, maybe working in a bar or a restaurant or something, but you make the majority of your cash working in the digital economy. So the reason we say watch out with the digital normal life is because uh, if you're living in a foreign country and working, uh, you will still need to sort out your legality of living in the island as well as taxes. In Grenada, for example, you still need to apply for and obtain a work permit as you're technically working here, even though it is remotely. So it's not a good idea to be living in a place, especially long term, uh, and not be contributing to your local government. You can get deported if your paperwork is not um, in line, approved. Or yep. Yeah. Working both physically on the island as well as having a sideline, like a non-life freelancing job or teaching or something like that, or uh, a, a passive income stream like affiliate marketing, AdSense, or perk sales, it's really the best scenario because you can be fully integrated in your local community and also have a little bit more of financial security. A bit of advice though, working online is not easy. It takes a lot of hours to build up your skills, it takes a lot of hours to build up your connections and the content and to start to develop that solid revenue stream, particularly if you're going to come out here and now start to rely upon it. If your goal is to get into this type of work, start thinking about setting it up before you leave, where you've got the uh, people around you who can support you, you can start figuring out what it is you want to offer in the online world. You can start to think about how you can market that and use the resources that are around you to start to build up your network. You can also start to develop a base for clients and start to work with them before you have to depend on that revenue. It's just about mitigating risk. 
Another deciding factor on the type of place you might want to look to go to is data connectivity. You might find that this is the most tranquil, beautiful place in the world with a lot of people passing through and that you could make an absolute killing living here and a digital nomad. But if you've got no Wi-Fi, you're disconnected and you can't do that. So it's really important to look at what the connectivity is in the location you want to go to, whether it's going to be 4G, 5G, or whether it's going to be fixed line internet and Wi-Fi. Um, really important to understand that. So typically, casual work on the island is not paid well. So you can make ends meet, but in order to save for travel in, few, in your future, you want to expand your income. So there are a set of skills that we find that are very useful. Photography and videography, for example. Website development and content management. Social media marketing. Construction. Teaching. This can be yoga, scuba diving, skydiving, skiing, foreign languages, etc. I find that skiing is massive here. Yeah. Yeah, sure. downhill snow skiing. <laughs> Love it, but everybody wants it here. Sales and customer service and management. These skills are in relatively short supply globally, but in particularly in small islands like this. So if you're able to demonstrate successes in any of these areas and can communicate well, you're likely to be able to eke out a decent living. Remember though, that something like digital marketing is a lot more involved than just putting a couple of posts on Instagram. It's also important to remember though, if you're planning on moving to a tropical island and working, you need to actually work. It's very, very different from coming to a remote island location when you're on uh, vacation, um, as typically when you're on vacation, the height of work becomes lifting a margarita off the table by the side of the pool. Regardless of where you are in the world, work is work. And if you're in a place like this, sometimes it just takes a little bit more discipline to make that happen. So the other side of the equation in terms of making something like this actually work is keeping a lead on your expenses too. You have to keep in mind that if you keep partying every night, if you keep like eating out and shopping for stuff of, I don't know, things that you were actually used to using back home, but here in remote islands where those stuff are actually quite more expensive, yes, your pocket is going to run out of cash really quickly. That is a really good point. Um, one of the things, if you're thinking about coming to a tropical island living, it's a good idea to really keep a tight lid on expenses and, and on what you're spending. Uh, one of the things we always recommend is getting into the local mindset, which means that you're starting to think about where the locals are eating and eat where they're eating. Typically, that's gonna be where some of the best food is, um, but also shopping where the locals shop and, and uh, uh, living in a modest location. As your income streams start to increase, then you're able to change and move to more, more salubrious, more comfortable accommodation. But if you start to think modestly and start to think like a local and accept that. Um, it's also a case of, I know where I live, uh, up in a local community, there's a lot more vibe and there's a lot more happening as opposed to the more sterile environment of some of those expat communities where if you're here long term, you could be the only person in a community uh, when it's off peak. I admit, I would like to have a condo with a pool, but, here, the sea is never more than five minutes away, so... Yeah, yeah. Besides, matter. if you move to a place like this, it's actually, I think, to experience the local life, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, and that for me is really yeah. important. You're right, yeah. you're right. So once you're ready to make the move, get your visa in order, downsize your belongings and get ready for an adventure of a lifetime. It's a great lifestyle experience, so we both can recommend them more highly. Yeah, the only thing, do not expect it to be easy, because if it were, everybody would be doing that's it. That's true, that's true. So again, if you need more information about uh, this lifestyle, whether it would actually work for you or not, check our latest video, moving to a um, uh, Caribbean island. It's gonna be the link right up here. And yeah, thanks for watching, subscribe and like. Thanks very much.